Hi there, welcome to a video on significant figures. Now the key ideas in significant figures are that we count from left to right to figure out how many significant figures a, uh, a value has. And the first significant figure, we start counting when we get to the first non-zero digit. And every other digit, once we start counting, every other digit to the right of that is significant, or can be, whether it's a zero or not. Let's have a look at some examples. So when we're counting and we're asked to see how many significant figures certain numbers have, we start counting from left to right and we uh, start counting when we hit the first non-zero digit. Now we don't have to go very far in this first number to hit a non-zero digit. That first digit is a non-zero digit. So we'll start counting our significant figures there. One, two, three, four digits there that are significant. So we say that's a four significant figure uh, expression. Uh, here, the second value, the second, the second number here, we don't start counting our significant figures until we hit the first non-zero digit. That two is the uh, is the digit where it's the first non-zero digit we hit, and we start counting our digits then. So that has three significant figures. Once we start our counting where the two is, that's our first non-zero digit. Every other digit, whether it's a zero or not, can can be can be considered to be significant. So those middle zeros there, even though they're zeros, they're after the first non-zero digit and are considered to be uh, significant in that number there. So there's a total of five significant figures in 20,034. In this last uh, example though, we don't only start counting our significant figures when we hit the first non-zero, and that's the five. So working from left to right, we start counting on the five, and uh, and then one more there gives us a total of two significant figures altogether. Alright, so we're often asked to round using significant figures. To round a number is to cut it shorter to leave the required number of significant figures in our answer. So we'll get a, a long answer maybe from our calculator and we'll be asked to round off to, the, to a certain number of significant figures. Let's see how that works. Uh, the way we uh, do this is we cut the number after the required number of significant figures. We chop the number up, uh, or chop it short anyway. Then we have to check the next digit. It's called the critical digit. The next digit after that, um, that cut is made, um, we have to check that. Now if that critical digit is less than 5, we leave the cut number as it is. Uh, but if that critical digit is 5 or more, we add 1 to the final digit, or we round up. So uh, that's how we do it, and the, and the little motto here, five or more raise the score. Now we did this when we're rounding, when we rounded um, using decimal places, but this is slightly different. We just count, it's, well, pretty similar, but we just start counting our significant figures in a different spot. We don't start counting necessarily from the decimal point. Let's have a look at some examples. This will clear it all up here. We'll keep all those, uh, that, that decision tree in mind underneath here. Let's see how we would round correct to three significant figures, the number 92.76. Now the rule is we start counting our significant figures when we get to the first non-zero digit working from left to right. So that 9, the first digit there, is the first significant figure. So if we wanted to have two, three significant figures altogether, we want to chop that number or round it after the 7 there. So that's where we want to chop it. Now the proper way to round this is we check the critical digit. Now in this case if we're chopping it after the 7, the, the critical digit here is the 6. Now if you see down on the right hand side here, if the critical digit is 5 or more, we add 1 to the final digit. The final digit is going to be either a 7 or an 8 in this number. And in this case, because uh, this 6 is uh, 5 or more, that means we'll add 1 to the 7 as our final digit. So we end up with a, uh, an expression of 92.8, and that's been rounded to three significant figures. It's leaving us with three digits there once we started counting. So it's a bit like rounding decimal places, but we're just uh, having a look at the critical digit in a slightly different spot. So that's uh, rounding 92.762 to three significant figures. Sim very similar rounding process to decimal places. So here, this time we're asked to round 0 0.028432 to a total of four significant figures. Now you'll remember that we don't start counting significant figures until we hit the first non-zero digit. So working from left to right, our first non-zero digit, our first significant figure is the two. Then we have the second uh, one there, the third one, the fourth one, and we want to chop it after four significant figures. 
Now our critical digit here is the 2, but um, that critical digit is less than 5, so we'll be working on this system here. If the critical digit is less than 5, we leave the cut number as it is. At the moment the cut number is 0 0.02843, and we just want to leave that as it is, as uh, that final digit as a 3 instead of adding 1 to it. Now why didn't we add, add 1 to the 3? Because this critical digit of 2 is uh, not 5 or more. So notice we're left with four significant figures in our final expression. All right, now there is a special case. And when rounding a whole number ending in zeros, we'll have a look at an example. When rounding a whole number ending in zeros, we can consider some zero digits to be significant and some not. It's quite a, quite a quirky little example, this, but it's worth uh, having in the back of your mind in case you're asked about it. So let's have a look at this uh, example here. If we want to round correct to two significant figures, 20, 2584, let's have a look. Our first significant figure would be the 2. Our second significant figure would be the 5. If we're going to chop it after that, we'll have to look at the critical digit, uh, which is the 8. Now, that because that 8 is 5 or more, we'll add 1 to the 5, and we'll be left with a 2 and a 6. Now, when we uh, round off, we are approximating the original number. We are changing it a little bit, but it shouldn't be too far away from the value of the original number. Now, if we just wrote down 26, a 2 and a 6, that's a long way from 2,584. So we have to keep in mind that uh, the principle that a rounded answer, once we've rounded it off, it must be a decent approximation, a good approximation of the original number. Now, saying 26 is not a very good rounding off of 2,584, is it? So what we have to do is, um, the place values of the remaining digits must be logical. At the moment, we had an original place value of the 2 over here as, as 2,000, and if we leave it like this, we have uh, the 2 in the tens column. It, it's like it's gone from 2,000 to just 20. Um, and so that's not a very good uh, use of place value. It hasn't kept the same place value. It's not logical. So what we do, we are allowed to put zeros in to hold the place value of the other digits to make sure it's logical. So uh, we can then say that that's actually got two significant figures only because what we're doing is we're considering, we're deeming, we're allowed to say that those two zeros there are not for the purposes of extra significant figures. They are just to hold the digits in their right, rightful place. We're not considering these zero digits to be significant. They are just being used to help the other digits to keep logical place values. So now that we've put those two zeros in, this uh, digit of 2 out the front is once again a 2000, isn't it? Like it was in the original um, expression of the number. So that's a bit uh, strange there. We're allowed to have a freedom, the freedom to say that we can put zeros in at the end of numbers uh, if we need to keep the place values the same as they were before or similar, so that we have a sensible approximation uh, for our final result. So it's a, a bit of a special case and it's a bit... Um, there's a fair bit to it, but still. So in fact, in a strange way, depending on the situation, depending on the question, the number such, a number such as 5,000 could be considered as having one, two, three, or four significant figures, depending on the question. So we could have, uh, in, a, in certain questions, we might like to have three zeros that are just there to hold the place so that five is in the right place. Uh, that right place value or we could have one of them deemed as being significant or two of them being deemed as, deemed as significant or all three zeros being significant we have that power to say in various situations so that gives us a lot of flexibility when working with whole numbers ending in zero but that is a special case most of this um, most of this concept is is detailed in the first part of this video but I just wanted to you to be aware of that quirky, strange, uh, special case when whole numbers end in zeros. But, uh, but there's uh, ways to think of that, about that that'll give us the right answers. So let's just recap on significant figures. We count from left to right. The first significant figure is the first non-zero digit. And once we identify that, every other digit, whether it's a zero or not, to the right of that first one is uh, can be significant. Uh, secondly, we use a similar rounding decision tree to uh, rounding decimal places. We just uh, start counting in a different spot, that's all. So five or more, raise the score. 
and that quirky example at the end there, whereby we're allowed to consider some zeros at the end of whole numbers to be significant, depending on our purposes. So I hope that helps with significant figures. Quite a bit uh, of information in there. Hope it helps. And watch the video again if you like, or other videos from peterblakemaths.com. Thanks a lot for listening. See you next time.